Luke 22, 54 through 62. Then they took, then took they him, talking about Jesus, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Warmed his hands the devil's far, he shouldn't have done that. But a certain maid, now notice, number one, a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. Talking about being with Jesus. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about a space of a, one hour after another, confidently, that's the only time in the whole Bible, the word confidently is found. It's not found anywhere else. So that means whoever identified him there was very sure. Confidently. Very sure. And about the space of one hour or another, confidently. Affirmed. When they put you in the court and say, you swear on the Bible or affirm, you can either swear or affirm. So that means they're absolutely telling the truth. And about a space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, are they true? Man, they were was, they was sure he was one of them. Confidently affirmed of a truth. This fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Now, the third person was a, was a man. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. So the first one the Bible tells us was a maid. The second one the Bible tells us was uh, a, a, a maid, a, a, not a maid, but another a, a, a damsel. And, but the third one was a man. His name was Malchus. Over, I'm going to flip ahead and flip over to John right quick and show you that. John 18. John 18 verse 10 says, then Simon, having, drew a, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jump over to verse 26, 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, did not I see thee in the garden with him? So if a man cut off my ear, I believe I'd be close enough to recognize him. <laughs> so the first one was a maid, say it was a damsel, and then, then Malchus. So, you hear people say three women. Well, read your Bible again. It's two women and a man. Yeah. But I always wanted to throw that in there a little bit. I want to preach to the bit about this walking afar off. Let's read on through 65 here, 62. But a certain maid, I said, got that within, uh, then, and about the space of uh, one hour, Another confidently affirmed, saying of a truth, this fellow also is with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how, that, how he said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out, and we up bitterly. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon our soul. Forgive us for our sins. Bless the reading of the word of God. Yeah. And Lord, for anyone here today that's wandering off a little bit, ain't walking as close as they ought to, smite your heart, Lord, with old Peter's conviction, and may they get close again before something terrible happens in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Talk to you about the causes uh, and the curses, so to say, of walking far, walking far off. When you do that, it causes others to walk far off. The scripture of that is over in uh, Luke 23, 49, where some women stood afar off. It's catching. It's catching. If you're going to back up on God, there'll be people backing up with you. But thank God, if you're going to launch out in the deep, they'll be with you there too. If you slow up, they'll slow up. If you speed up, they'll speed up. 
Don't fall by the wayside. Don't quit. Don't back up. Just go in high gear, head on, for the glory and honor of God. So if you back up, others will follow you. Amen. I don't know, as Brother Doug always says, only one thing worse than going to hell, and that's taking your kids with you. Amen. But anyway, uh, the causes of following the far off. And they were every one in Peter. When you start blaming somebody else for your problems, you're just telling what a backslider you are. Hey. Amen. Hey. You don't have to follow that crowd. You don't have to get offended at them. It's all in Peter. Everything Peter did was because he backed up. Yeah. Amen. Because he backed up. You can't blame on nobody else but yourself. One uh, cause was the fear of man. Peter was scared. He was just like me and you. He, he had feelings, and he got scared. He was afraid. You can call him a chicken if you want to, like a preacher, chicken, chicken preacher, whatever you want to do. But you can call him names if you want to. You can say he's a hypocrite if you want to. Call him a backslide. Call him anything you want to. But he was like me and you. He was human, and he got scared. When he was beating on Jesus, getting ready to crucify him, Peter kind of backed up a little mind. He didn't want that to happen to him. And according to history, it happened to him anyway. According to the Catholic history, can't guarantee that history, it's tradition, but according to that, he ended up being crucified upside down. But the fact is, you might as well get into battle because you're going to die anyway. No matter how you die, you go to heaven or hell one or the other. So let's go for God and let her rip. Amen. Amen. But what the cause was, he was afraid. Fear of man snared Peter into being a coward. Don't ever be listed as a coward, as a traitor, as a backbiter, or one who walks afar off. Let's get close, stay close, and draw people in instead of running them off. So fear of man snared old Peter into being a coward. Men are like Peter, fearing pain and fearing persecution. Peter did not want the pain of Calvary. He did not want the persecution of being a follower of Christ. So three times in one night, he denied that he even knew Jesus. And about three, day, three or four days before, he said, I'll go with you. And I'll die with you. I'll suffer with you. Huh. We think that when things are on the mountaintop. But if things get down the valley, that's when we get Come turned on. chicken. Yeah. Amen. We get kind of back up on it. But Peter swore he'd die with Christ. And when the time came to be tried, he denied him three times in one night. But Jesus prophesied that he would do that. He said, Simon, before the clock crows three times, you'll, before the clock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice. And Peter, oh no, I won't deny you. Though I die with you, I'll never deny you. But if Jesus' prophecy came true, Peter denied Christ three times the same night. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit on John. When he was by the way the seaside there after Jesus rose from the dead, that he gathered around his disciples, he could go up to heaven on Mount of Olives, off the sea. He said, Simon, Simon, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Yeah. He asked him a second time, Son, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. That's baby sheep. Then he said the third time, do you love me? And the Bible said it grieved Peter that he asked him the third time. Yeah. See, he denied him three times in one night, and Jesus made him confess him three times in one day. Yeah. So you might as well go ahead and live for Jesus. He's going to get you for it over anyway. <laughs> might as well just stay in the battle and go for God and walk close, because he's going to get you anyway. And Peter was broken hearted because Jesus said the third time, do you love me? But when Peter finally woke up to the fact that he had fulfilled the prophecy of Jesus and died three times, he went out and wept bitterly. No matter how far away you get, he'll accept you back. Hey. But look what a mess you make when you walk away. Yeah. Look what a mess away you make when you walk far off. Peter led folks astray during that little bit of a time. Don't ever back up on serving God. Don't ever back up. Don't ever walk far away. Get as close as you can and hug on and listen to his heartbeat like old John did when he laid his head on his bosom. The difference between John and Peter was John was at the cross and Peter was hiding. The only disciple at the cross was John. There's, a, there's three Marys and a John at the foot of the cross and Peter was also where hiding. Friend, I'm telling you, it's not time to be a backslider and a back-upper. It's time to go forward for God and walk close. You've been close before. I know you have, or you wouldn't even be here tonight. Hey. If you've ever been closer than you are tonight, then you'll slip back a night. Don't you remember the good old days when you shout the victory, praise God, tears went out your eyes, and your heart thumped in your chest, and you were just ready to go do something for God? 
If you slow down any, it's time to walk close again. Yeah. Don't walk far off. Number two was the lack of love. Mm. Boy, Peter sure felt bad when Jesus said, you love me three times in one day. He sure felt bad. But a lack of love. His love for Jesus was too weak to keep him close. If your love for Jesus is not weak enough to keep you close to him, then the Bible said in Ephesians, the church of Ephesians, the book of Revelation, that you've left your first love. There should not be anything or anybody that you love more than your Savior. Peter at that time lacked the love they swore he had. I'm glad he got it later on and never backed up again. Matter of fact, he got the full of the Holy Ghost. He walked down the street, people jumped up, healed. His shadow healed him. His shadow healed him. All you had to do is just get between him and the sun. <laughs> All you had to do is just get between him and the sun. And that shadow hits you and there you was healed. And Peter preached at Pentecost to 3,000, I'll say. He preached another time 2,000. And he, I'm telling you, Peter got right. But he shouldn't have went through that backup stage. Yeah. But he did. He walked a far off. He reaped what he sowed. And you will too reap what you sowed. As so a lack of love accounts for his conduct. Denied him thrice. Had to confess him thrice. A stranger would have made Peter... Looked like a braver man if he stood the test. But Peter just did not stand the test. When they saw him, they didn't realize he was that great Peter, the fisherman of men. They didn't realize he was that man going to preach at Pentecost. They saw him as one hiding in the shadows. If a person sees you and don't know you, I hope and pray to God there's enough about you to let them know that you're a Christian. Amen. I'm going to say this, and it might not, I don't want to offend nobody, but I'm going to say it. It's a shameful thing when Brother Sonny has to tell a woman to zip her fly. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. I'll stop right there on that. But the fact is, friend, we need to let folks know we're a child of God. Don't back up. Don't shut up. Stand up and speak up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, a strong love would have helped him. If he had a strong love, but his love got weak. Weakness and love causes distant followers. The Bible said the love of many is waxing cold. We're living in that day today. People don't love like they used to. They don't love church, don't love the Bible, don't love one another like they used to. Down in Mount North Carolina, when you had friends, you had friends. You had enemies, you had enemies. But it's either one or the other. But today you can't tell who's for you and who's against you. But we've got to stay close ourselves. Don't let them drag you down. You just don't drag them down. Walk close. Peter walked too far off. Make terrible mistakes. I said their hearts are filling for fear. Today I see people, their hearts are, We've never lived in a day where people are afraid they are, they are today. Yeah. Nerve pill here and pain pill there and nerve killer here and yeah. smoke dope here and take a shot yonder and get drunk here. And folks just don't have no, no backbone no more. Yeah. Don't get up and go. They don't have no... no Friend, no vitality. They went down for everybody. And that's opening the doors to femininity yeah. and sodomy. Yeah. Yeah. When men ain't men and women ain't women and nobody's got any guts no more. Mm. Somebody needs to stand up. But the fact is, in the book of Revelation, Jesus said about the book of Ephesians, said the church festival said they've left their first love. What is your first love? Or who is your first love? If Jesus Christ ain't your first love, everything else is going to fail you. Yes. But he'll never fail you. Jesus will. And his weakness of faith. John had a, a, had a great faith, but old Peter, he had a weak faith at this time. That was the cause of it. Peter's faith was so weak that Jesus told him, Simon, I'm going to pray for you. That your faith fail not. Yeah. Satan's going to sift you like wheat. But I'm praying for you. That your faith fell not in the what? And then what was it? And when you're converted, yeah. strengthen the brethren. So Peter had to be converted for you to do anybody any good. Uh-huh. As long as he had that heart that wandered off and wandered, walked away far off, as long as, he wasn't, as long as he wasn't close and as long as he didn't have the faith and didn't have the love, he wasn't going to do nobody no good. But once he got converted, oh, yeah. you'll never see him backing up again. The angel broke him out of this jail and broke him out of that jail. Took him out of his ship and took him out of that. 
God walked close to him and he walked close to God and nobody could do nothing with Peter. They couldn't do nothing with him. When the folks come against him, they all fell away backwards. They couldn't resist his spirit. They couldn't resist his words. God was on him because he walked close after he got converted. Somebody said, when did Peter get saved? At Pentecost, when he got converted, at the when he got the Holy Ghost, when did he get converted? I don't know, you tell me. But the fact is, one day he got converted. You don't see him backing up after that. Sometime in your life, yeah. got cold chills on that. Sometimes in your life, you need to sit right down and say, here's my stand, and today I'm going for God, and nothing will back me up. See, that day in my life, day from 19, 1963. And from that day to here, I ain't been nowhere near perfect, don't get me wrong, but I ain't backed up none. Ain't fixing back up none. Ain't fixing to shut up. Ain't fixing to slow down. I'm telling you, walk close, and you can feel the presence of God. Bill asked me one time, he said, why do you shout? I said, when the Holy Ghost comes in, I'm going to be the first one to know it. <laughs> Somebody will have to say, God's here. <laughs> if, if I know it, I know it. If I don't know it, I don't show it. But the fact is, God will walk close if you will. He said, draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But the weakness of his faith was another cause. But Jesus just prayed for me. My joy right here is that I've got a high priest who can be touched with the feelings of my infirmities. And he knows my flesh. And he knows my mind. And he knows my state. He knows my name. He knows the hairs on my head. He knows the thoughts of my mind. He knows me. And he's praying for me. Thank God when Jesus Christ is praying for you, you don't have to worry about a thing. He's up to date on his prayer life. He don't have to warm up none. He already knows what he's going to say. But we get around this altar and we get to praying a little bit quiet and get a little louder and get a little louder just thing. know we're in the Holy Ghost now big time. But Jesus don't have to warm up none. He knows what he's praying right now. And he's praying for you. Glory to God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, my mediator, my high priest, is praying for me. And if Peter had any sense, he'd realize that Jesus was praying for him and they couldn't do nothing to him as long as he was walking close. But he walked far off. He got scared. His faith got weak. His love got weak. Well, Thank God for intercessory prayer. Oh, yeah. Thank God for a maid. Thank God for a damsel. Thank God for old Malchus. They shook him up. They shook him up. But he got right. So this world of this caused a distant following. You cannot serve two masters. Either you love one, hate the other, hold one, despise the other, you can't serve God and mammon. It's time for us to choose this day who you're going to serve. Oh, yeah. Old lives on Mount Carmel, odds were 400 to oh. 1. 401. 400 false prophets and one real prophet. And then when them soldiers came out to fight at the old Gideon, the odds there was 401. That's God's yeah. odds. Yeah. 401. Let them rip. <laughs> when 400 people's against you, you just get about ready to fight. God's going to win, friend. Amen. He's going to win. Amen. And when you walk close, you're going to be in the shadow and you'll win too. The fact is this, very quickly. Can't serve two matters. Some believers try to serve the world and the Lord, and they just don't do no good at it. Don't do no good at it. They got just enough, listen, listen, got just enough religion to make them miserable. Just enough religion to make them miserable. They ain't got to make them happy, but they ain't got, they got just enough to make them miserable. They just can't be happy in the church. They can't be happy out of the church. Like the old boy said, would you rather be, would you rather be, be fishing on Sunday and, and, and should be at church? Would you rather be at church and wishing I was fishing? I'd go to church and forget the rest of it. But the fact yeah. is, they, they, they ain't happy for in church. They're not happy for not fishing. They're just miserable. Just enough religion to make them miserable. Well, my old lady made me go to church this morning. That's misery. Uh, misery. Do it because you want to be close, not far away. Amen. And he'll snuggle you up to his bosom. And you know God's real. But anyway, back to this. Some believers try to serve the world and the Lord. He said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. But many don't know the requirements. See, you're saved by grace through faith. And over in the book of Peter, you're kept by the power of God through faith. So you're saved by grace through faith, kept by the power of God through faith. <coughs> so faith is evidence, faith is substance. Salvation comes when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation by grace through faith. But friends, if you're going to serve God, faith is dead without works. Yes. And if you're going to be close to God, you have to work. Whoever became a great football player by practicing basketball. Right. 
Yeah. 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 Who became a great Christian by playing rock and roll music, yeah. hanging out at the bar, sucking beer? Yeah. Who ever became a great Christian preaching horseshoe on Sundays instead of going to church? Yeah. Yeah. Who ever became a great Christian by not praying yeah. and not reading the Bible, not going to church, oh. and not doing the things God said to do? You see, there's requirements right. for success. Yeah. You can go to heaven as a half hearted so and so, but you can't get the joy of the Lord and the peace. Yeah. Unless you walk close. I'll show it to you. Many do not know the requirements. John 18, 10 and 26, and Matthew 10, 32, you know what it says there, what it teaches? It says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you're ashamed of me before men, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. See, it's up to you. You don't want Jesus to deny you. Not the joys here, but maybe in heaven. I don't know about that. But if you're saved, you're saved. If you ain't saved, you're going to hell. No matter what you do. But if you don't do what you're supposed to, you can't expect God to bless you. Yeah. Which one of you buys your kids a brand new bicycle because he cuts somebody out? Well, who, who buys their, their son a brand new bicycle because they shot the street lights out with BB gun? You don't reward people for doing bad stuff. You reward them for doing good stuff. Uh, and if you want God to bless you, do what's right. Come on. Yep. Hey. Let's watch it very quickly. James 2, 26 says, Faith without works is dead also. Great. So if you want to walk close, you have to do the things He tells you to do. The uh, requirements, one of them is love, of course, and self-denial. Oh, that's a hard one. When's the last time you denied yourself something? I talked to a fellow one day about the, about the tribulation. He said, well, if I don't make it in the rapture, I'll just resist the mark of the beast. I said, you can't resist a cigarette. You see, self-denial, we just can't do that. If we sit and we want it, we're going to get it. The kids have to go hungry. If we have to take our tithes to get it. Now, I don't preach on tithes. I just do it and y'all follow me. But the fact is, you take what belongs to God and use it for yourself, and then you wonder why you ain't happy. Yeah. Right. Right. Hallelujah. You get the point, I reckon. The last thing is perils of falling afar off. Now, the causes, I'll give you the causes of falling, falling far, following far off. Now, I'm going to give you the perils of it, the problems that comes out of it. Falling far off was the beginning of a downfall for Peter. He not only followed afar off, but he denied him three times. You see, when you start falling afar off, you go down. The only road away from God is down. Yeah, yeah. And Peter started down a slippery slope and ended up weeping that night with bitter tears burning his cheeks. Friend, you've got to walk close. Used to be preachers get in the pulpit and say, Walk with me, Jesus. And he would. We need to get back close to Jesus. Well, following afar off was the beginning of a dreadful downfall. Peter fell into a terrible sin of Christ denial. Can you think of anything worse than that? Getting drunk, that ain't that bad. Cussing, lying, stealing, adulterating, fornicating, that's terrible stuff. But to deny Christ. And the Bible said in the book of Peter that they deny even the Lord that bought them. Mm. Can you, can you even imagine Peter doing that? Can you even imagine him denying the Lord that bought him? But in the book of Peter, it talks about denying the Lord that bought him. Young people don't ever deny Jesus. Let that poor old pervert crowd go on their way, but don't back up and shut up and speak up for Jesus. Don't ever deny Christ. I ain't never done it. But I can just kind of imagine what I feel like if I did. God have mercy on my soul. Can you imagine such a terrible thing? Come on! Can you even imagine? Can you imagine such a ungodly, terrible thing. 
That's a one. Been so good to you all, all, all these years. Free to deny him. Oh, God have mercy to the devil. I can't help it. I don't know what to think about it. Peter was a real hero. They turned a real zero. Thank God he turned into another hero after he defeated Nero. Hallelujah. A beginning of a terrible, terrible downfall. Christ in now. Oh, hallelujah. Well, backsliding is most often called by, caused by falling afar off. You know the word backslider is only in the Bible one time. Which one? It ain't in there two times. Just one. Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. It goes back to where it says this. The ways of the wicked is just in his own eyes. You take a man living in sin, he'll find some way to justify it. My next door neighbor, living with a woman. And I talk to him, he says, well, I don't do nothing I'm ashamed of. Now, you're constantly up sitting with hot iron then. You don't shack up with a woman you ain't married with and don't be bothered with it if you're a Christian. Of course, he don't claim to be one, but the fact is simply this. We all do things we're ashamed of. Amen. If it ain't nothing but a little old fault every now and then. Yeah, right. But we've got to realize that the backslider in heart is content with his own ways. He justifies himself. Backsliding is in there. The backslider is only one time. But in Jeremiah 3, 14, God said he was married to old backsliding Israel. And a man who used to preach here, he moved up to Michigan, he preached here some, and he used that, he used that term, he said, God is married to a backslider. After church, I said, brother, let me talk to you a minute. I said, the Bible does not say God's married to the backslider. It don't say it. Yes, it does. I said, don't. Show it to me. The burden of proof's on you. You want to preach it. Show it to me. Yeah. He said, what's in there? I said, that ain't in there. Show it to me. Of course he couldn't. But I took the concord and showed him the word backsliding only one time. God was married, he said he was married to old backsliding Israel. But it does not say he's married to the backslider. Right. Yeah. Fellow asked me, did you believe in backsliding? I said, no, but people do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But why do they do it? Who would want to slip back from Christ? <laughs> Who would want to back up? Who would be so dummy to want to back up from God? Run and grab hold and hang on. Don't back up. Don't be a denier. Don't walk far off. Get up close. Get closer. Hey. And when you feel that sweet, sweet spirit, you'll say, thank God I'm glad I'm here. Hey. Have you ever been to church and said, hallelujah, I'm glad I came today. Hey. Woo, glory, I'm glad I showed up this morning. That's the way it ought to be. Hey. Oh, listen, I'm, about, I'm about done. So the backslider is most often called by walking afar off. Falling afar off. Well, falling afar off causes loss of inward peace and joy. You can't walk far away from Christ right. and have the peace and the joy. You might not lose your salvation, but you ain't got no peace, you ain't got no joy. You're miserable, just miserable as you can be. And you make everybody around you miserable. Your wife don't like you no more. Your children, children don't care nothing about you. Your husband don't like you no more. And you ain't getting along good, fussing, fighting, raising hell. Let it, just get close to Jesus and that'll heal all that. Amen. A miserable man makes miserable people. A miserable woman makes miserable people. And I'll say this, a miserable child makes miserable parents. Well, you may not fall into open sin, but you can't follow far off without losing your inward peace and joy. I love that inward peace. I like joy. I like the joy of my religion. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. My peace give I, not as the world give, but my peace give I unto thee. Yeah. The world talks about peace. Come on. You know what the Bible said about that? When everybody's hard, peace, peace, there's no sudden destruction. Yeah, yeah. That's the way the commerce works, like raising a hammer. Peace, peace, peace. That's the way communism works and socialism. Yeah. Everybody wants peace and they slam it right on you. Destruction that is. Jesus said that. Peace, peace, no sudden destruction. 
Father, for all causes, loss of inward peace and joy. You may still profess religion and still walk far off. You may lose your usefulness when falling far off. Have you ever anybody say, I'm tired of being used? No, you ain't. If God's using you, it's the greatest thing for happening to you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Shut up. When I said, oh, I'm saved, I just don't like church. That makes about as much sense as a bat brain. <laughs> Who would love the groom and not like the bride? That's it. Would you invite him to your wedding? I said, get out, you ain't got a wedding girl on. Yeah. Cast him out of darkness. Uh, yeah. If you don't like the bridegroom, the groom don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Still loves you, but you don't like it. Yeah. Tell said one time, I got baptized when I was a child. I just don't need church. Yeah. If baptism's all you've got and all you need, you ain't got much, you don't need much. Hey. Yeah. Too many people who are walking far off and are backslidden have just never been high enough to slide. I challenge you, walk close. It's a whole lot more fun. Joy us, speak with full glory, peace, peace, understanding. Walk close. Peter walked the far off, and he got into some terrible, terrible trouble. Tears stained his face and burnt blisters on his cheeks. He wept bitterly, bitterly. Because he denied the Lord that bought him. What a curse was on Peter that night. Well, I just want to challenge you. Do some front climbing. The cure for backsliding is front climbing. The cure for backsliding is front climbing. The cure for walking the far off is get close and stay close. Let's pray. Father, come to you in Jesus' name. Bless the reading of the word of God tonight. Preaching thereof. I want to thank the Lord God for a touch of the master's hand. Lord, we ain't nothing to nobody. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, give us the grace never to deny you. Oh, God, help us. To become bold as lions, wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.